All right, you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another informational, informational? Instructional, no, 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 informative. I'm gonna say informative video that I am bringing to my channel um, discussing certain things I noticed during my bodybuilding prep of 2020. I competed in 2015, I never thought I'd do it again. But with, uh, with the way that this year's been going, in March, I, well, sorry, in April, I decided to clean my clean my shit up, you know, clean my body up, clean my diet up, get in better shape, feel better about myself, and see what happened. In July, I decided to to hook up with my first bodybuilding coach. Um, from there, I went from 11 11% body fat down to 5% body fat by the end of August. Competed, held that condition, that 5% body fat, from August to October. Competed again, and here we are on November the 12th. So. That was my year. In this video, I'm going to discuss the, the, the physical indications and mental that my body went through uh, for me to know that I'm getting down to that, you know, definitely single digit body fat percentage level, but not only single digits, you know, down to seven, six, five, even four and a half percent body fat. I got down to four and a half percent body fat at one point. And I was shredded. I was absolutely shredded. You know what I mean? You see lines come in that you never knew you had. So this video, I'm just going to talk about my body and you know what I went through and what I noticed coming down to 5% body fat. Because the reality is, is that I wasn't tracking my calories. And if you want to know how I got down to 5% body fat without tracking a single calorie, go back and watch that video. My approach is unique, I feel. Um, but it's, a, it's an approach that worked for me and I used the mirror more than anything as far as tracking how I was going. And with that being said, let's get into some of the things that I noticed. Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me. Wow, please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, mentally, I've talked about how, how it feels mentally. Uh, I've talked about how it, you know, how, um, you know, being 5% body fat, you're going to feel fatigued, all of that stuff. All of that information is in a previous video too. So if you want to go check that out, please do. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the physical indications. And there's a few, and I've written them down just so I don't miss any. So when you're getting down to 5% body fat, you will think you're lean. Okay, you'll think you're lean at 9%. You'll think you're lean at 8%, 7% but your body weight still continues to come down and you still seem to you know, lose body fat from places that you never even thought you had it. So, okay, when I got to 5% body fat, okay, my, my, my lowest ever reading through body fat calipers was 4%. Like I said, I did a show at the end of August and did another show at the end of October. So during that time, my body fat percentage, I got, I got read every single week um, and it didn't go above 6%. So I literally stayed at 5% body fat for eight weeks. And these are the certain physical indicators that I developed and had on my body every single day. And this is the reality of being shredded. Okay, so the first part that I'm gonna mention is the tricep and rear delt tie-in. That is something that is soft on most people. Okay, even if you're 12% body fat, even if you're nine, eight percent body fat, that line, that line splitting you know, the bottom of your rear delt and, and the top of your tricep is one of the final places for me anyway um, to get lean. And there is two factors to that. There's one that says, okay, well, you're going to need a decent amount of muscle mass in your rear delt to actually have enough, you know, size to push it out to actually make that line. You know what I mean? If you don't have a, rear, if you don't have a developed rear delt, it's not going to protrude. So I suppose that's part of it, but certainly the fat around the back of the shoulder and at the back of the and at the top of the tricep is some of the last fat to go on my body. But when it does, and you turn to the side or you turn to the back, or even from the front, you know that tricep will really start to protrude out because that cut that's coming around the delt is coming in, you know, more more defined, and that look I absolutely love. That is one of my favorite things to have a tricep that is literally split from the rear delt nicely is great. I fucking loved it. 
that line also when you turn around to do a back double bicep it's going to really improve the level of detail on your back double bicep pose so train your rear delts that's all i can say another thing that i noticed was my sternum so you can have body you can have like quite a lot of body fat on around your um your, your abdominals but the first place that gets really lean really quickly and like rock hard like there's no fat there is your sternum so that's just just underneath or just between and just underneath you know the the, the, the two corners the two inner corners of your pec the two bottom inner corners of your pec it's just underneath that it's a hard a hard bony um, area and until I got probably below you know nine eight percent body fat there was a layer of fat there it, it felt soft I didn't really know exactly what was going on under there but I tell you what when you get to four or five percent body fat you know exactly what's going on under there and there ain't much it's bone it is bone so my sternum once that starts getting lean once I can really really feel it and I can still feel it um, that was a certain indicator and so basically that you know the level of leanness just starts you know spreading down and down and down and down and down because at the end of the day, your lower, your lower abs, not only the back of your tricep and, and, and rear delt, but the lower abs and the love handles, mate, they're always going to be the final place to go. Always. And I'm happy to say that when you do get to 5% body fat and you do get rid of your love handles, and it is nice and tight around there, you start seeing veins coming up your abs. Okay? I have a fair few photos that I took. I just could not believe it, man. Some nights I went to bed after eating a decent amount of carbs. I'd wake up in the morning. I would be fucking shredded with veins going all up my stomach from those carbs the night before. And water, you know what I mean? And sodium. I'm lean enough that a big cheat meal, all it's going to do is fill you out a little bit and put veins all over your fucking body, including going up your stomach. So for me to see, you know, literally veins going up my stomach was pretty incredible and it's certainly one of the changes that I'm going to mention in this video about you know your body when you get to 5% body fat you're going to see veins up your stomach it's fucking sick in fact you're not only going to see veins up your stomach you're going to see veins in places that you never thought you had <laughs> um, one of the the noticeable places that I saw a, a new vein this time was actually on the inside of my bicep so I had effectively never gotten the inside of my arm lean enough for me to see those that that real fine detail um, and I'm happy to say that this time I did um, that main vein that sort of comes up it's going to come underneath the bicep and it's going to go you know I guess into your armpit I guess into your armpit I'd never seen that before so I you know I'd seen a level of leanness around my bicep and around that area that I'd never seen before so that that Moving forward, if I get down to this level of body fat again, that's definitely going to be an indicator that I'm looking for. Although what I will say is that the more you train, the more you spend, you know, the, the, the more you train, the more years that you spend in the gym, the more veins you're going to develop. So you can develop veins, but with certain veins, you know, really like quite deep underneath the skin like that, you're only going to be able to see them when you're at 5% body fat. And that's what I found. Um, I... And very very weak along the chest I started getting veins along my chest okay so if you're if you're a guy out there thinking fuck yeah I can get a vein in my bicep but I've never seen one across my chest get to 5% body fat man you're gonna start seeing you know you, you're gonna start seeing some veins in places you never thought possible um, I had veins oh my god fuck man my calves Ugh, calves are ridiculous like they've always been pretty vascular they've always been pretty split but at 5% body fat I, I wouldn't even know what I was looking at like there was literally veins covering my entire fucking lower leg. <laughs> it was quite cool. Quite cool, I'm not going to lie. You know, being, being a bodybuilder at heart, loving bodybuilding, there's nothing wrong with having a few veins on your body. I would say when I get to 7% body fat, my lower abs are coming in, but they're not quite there. You know, certainly my, my upper leg is coming in, but it's not quite there. When I get to 5% body fat, it's coming in a bit more. But it's still not quite there. Four percent. My my upper leg is sort of really starting to get split, but it's still not there. You know, I probably had a good five. I don't know. Probably not five, but two or three kgs of body fat to lose still before getting on stage. And I just I just couldn't push it that hard. I couldn't push myself that hard to get rid of that body fat. 
but like places like your glutes, your hamstrings. Someone said to me years and years ago, and I never thought this was actually true, but it probably is. You, if you're, if you're planning on getting on a bodybuilding stage, you need the skin on your body to be like the skin on the back of your hands everywhere, including your glutes. And that was something that scared the shit out of me uh, back in the day. But, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying that my glutes got this lean. They certainly didn't, but they did get lean. And, you know, that's something you'll notice. So if you do pose properly, you know, you stick your back leg back, you pose your, uh, you know, from the bottom, you pose your calf up to your hammy, up to your glute. The lines that I saw at the back of my leg, I'd never seen before. You know, and, and these are these are legs that hadn't been trained a hell of a lot in the two years prior to this prep. So it's just amazing. It is amazing what, what your body can, can look like when you're down at a certain level of body fat. And and it's not easy. It's not easy. It's it's a lot of discipline, it's a lot of um consistency to get there, but but you know the, the the journey and seeing all these different things happen slowly but surely to your body is is the fun of it you know that's that is the journey and that will probably be what keeps you motivated and consistent to continue is these certain changes that you see happen so the skin folds from my my calipers if you want some numbers and the numbers that that i i know now after having it done probably about 12 13 weeks in a row um I used a seven point Jackson Pollock uh, caliper method, I believe. Uh, seven points on your upper body and lower body. One on the, one on the quad, the rest of them are on the upper body. And um, I started at above 10% body fat getting readings of around about eight, nine, 10 mils at certain points on the body. When I got down to my leanest, those readings were maximum six, if not four, I never ever got a two millimeter reading, ever. I never got a three millimeter reading. But at one point when I was my leanest, pretty much every reading on my entire body was at four millimeters. So if you're getting a seven point Jackson Pollock body fat caliper method and your caliper readings are coming in at, you know what, four, fives, threes, fours or fives, you're gonna be at 5% body fat, no fucking doubt. That's all I gotta say. If you're up at tens, you might be at 10%. I'm not saying that a body fat caliper is the best way to, to, to measure your body fat. In fact, it's not. But it was the best way for me because it was consistent. It didn't matter what method I used to track my body fat. As long as it was the same method each week, it was going to work. It was going to be consistent. So that's the way that we did it. Between 4 and 6 millimeters all round is about 5%. That's, that's what I think. And 4 millimeters ain't fucking much. I'm telling you that. So, you know, I got things like striated triceps for the, for the very first time. Um, my biceps were, were split, you know what I mean? We do have two heads of the bicep and it's, it's split, you can see. Uh, it might not be the biggest of biceps because, you know, I'm so lean, but it is split. And they do say that the fastest way, the fastest way to put on 10 kilos of muscle, or the fastest way to look like you've put on 10 kilos of muscle, is to lose 10 kilos of fat. And that's pretty much what I did. I lost six kilos of fat and I looked much bigger, but I wasn't. I was actually smaller and weaker, but that's just the illusion of bodybuilding. Anyways, guys, those were some of my thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I, yeah, I needed to make them and once I do, that'll be it. They'll be in the treasure trove of videos and I can move on to my next task. So thanks for watching, guys. If you do want to support me and my bodybuilding and fitness brand, Major Key Physiques, head to majorkeyphysics.com. We've got a selection of bodybuilding and fitness gear, um, accessories. I'm extremely proud of our products and uh, we're New Zealand owned and operated. So all your support is appreciated and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.